Yeah, the whole process, I started in 2003, so 11 years ago. And there's a scene in The Look of Silence where two perpetrators take me to a riverbank and take turns gleefully reenacting how they killed, which was really the genesis of both films. I filmed that, these two men, uh, and afterwards had the feeling that I'd wandered into Germany 40 years after the Holocaust only to find the Nazis still in power. And I knew somehow at that point that I would spend as many years of my life as it would take to address this situation. And I knew there were two films to make. I knew there was a film about, about how, uh, what happens to a whole society when it's, when killers win and when they impose a victor's history on the society, when a whole normality is built on terror and lies, what moral vacuum is inevitable. That's the act of killing. And then the look of silence, was the other film I knew I must make, also a film about today, not a historical documentary about what happened in 1965, a film about what does it do to human beings to have to live for decades and decades in fear and silence? How do survivors build a life in the shadow of the men who killed their loved ones, forever afraid, forever afraid this could happen to them again? No, it's a f- I think it's in a way a film about coexistence, and it's a film about love, and a family, and it's a film about about how import how you, important it is that you have truth and reconciliation in some form. It's a film about memory too. The 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 it's a f- it follows a young man who approaches the men who killed his brother, who live all around him, and confronts them with what they did. He he finds out how his brother was killed through footage I'd filmed with the perpetrators over the previous 10 years and he, learning from that he decide he watches that material with rapt attention devastation and decides to confront them he, these confrontations are i think remarkable in that i don't think there's ever been a documentary film where survivors confront perpetrators while the perpetrators are still entirely in power there have been many films where survivors and perpetrators meet, but usually, I think always, after the perpetrators have been removed from power, these confrontations provide the skeleton for the film. There's a man who's trying to get these, the, the, the main character, Adi, is trying to get the perpetrators to admit that what they did was wrong, not to, take, not to extract revenge or to get angry, but actually so that he can forgive them in the hope that if they can distance themselves from their crimes, he can forgive the human being. And if he can do that, he hopes he can his, lift his family out of the trap of fear because they can start to live with their neighbors, not as perpetrator and survivor, but as human being and human being. But he fails in that. He fails because none of the perpetrators have the courage to acknowledge what they did was wrong. That's the skeleton of the film, but the meat on that skeleton is a story, kind of very, po- I hope, a poetic story about a family that's... Um, that's lived for decades in this silence. We meet the main character's very old mother and very old father mo- in moments that are ev- often from everyday life. We're very, but y- very quiet moments that are swarming, I hope, with a kind of haunting intensity because of all the things that have gone unsaid for decades and decades and that create this illusion of tranquility that's just bursting with power, really. Well, Adi's family, we've we've had to work very close with them over the past six months to relocate them to another part of Indonesia, thousands of kilometers, thousands of miles from where we made the, the film. Trying to make the best of a terrible situation, we've moved them to a much more supportive community, to much better schools, out of the isolation of North Sumatra, um, and away from the, sh- out of the shadow of the still powerful perpetrators who killed their Adi's brother, the fact, though, that their family has had to move when in f- all Adi wants is to actually forgive the men who did this to him, the fact that the whole family's had to move is somehow a sign of just how far Indonesia still has to go before you have anything like genuine democracy.